In this playlist, we're going to go through the chemistry textbook by Raymond Chang and Kenneth Goldsby, 12th edition. And in this video, we're going to flip through chapter one. Okay, chapter one, chemistry, the study of change. It says that chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Chemistry is often called the central science because a basic knowledge of chemistry is essential for study students of biology, physics, geology, ecology, and many other subjects. All right, so chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. So matter is any, any stuff around you, any, any physical stuff around you, no matter what it is. So you're studying matter in the sense of what is it? What is it made of? Why does it have certain properties? Why is it a solid? Why is it a liquid? Why does it smell the way it smells? Just what, what, is, why, what is this? What is this stuff around me? And then you're also studying the changes it undergoes. So why when I, if I light, you know, gasoline, throw, a, throw a, a lit match on gasoline, why does it burn the way it burns? Why does it give off heat? It changes from this liquid to, this, to vapor. It changes from this hydrocarbon liquid to oxygen gas and water vapor. Why? Like you're studying all of that. That's, that's chemistry. You're studying matter. So just what is this stuff? What, what literally is it? And then you're studying why when I do certain things to this matter, why does it change from this to this in this way? That's chemistry. Okay, so it just talks more about what is chemistry, gives you more ideas of studying chemistry here. The scientific method. Okay, we're not going to go too deep into all this, but the scientific method is just talking about how you research something and solve a problem. Well, you've got something you want to anal analyze, and you do an experiment. And during that experiment, you collect data. The data obtained in a research study can be qualitative, which consists of general observations about the system, or quantitative. So that's numbers obtained by various measurements of the system. So qualitative is just more of a general description of what's going on. The substance turned from red to blue. That's a qualitative observation. Whenever the chemical reaction was taking place, the, ga the, the glass was shaking. That's a qualitative observation. But if you put numbers to any of this, so like you could say, well, heat was given off. Okay, that's qualitative. But if you measure the amount of heat given off, that's quantitative. You have numbers. Okay, so when doing research, you could have a hypothesis. So what a hypothesis is, is that, so, okay, you, you have a hypothesis, you have a hypothesis, and you can also have a theory. Okay, what's the difference between a hypothesis and a theory? Because both sound like the same thing. But technically, as, as far as like the precise definition in science, th these are two different things. So you want to study something, you have a topic that you want to do research on to understand this topic better. So you start doing some research, you're running tests, you get data, you look at the data for the first time, you've run one test, two tests, based on the data, you come up with a, a theory. So I don't want to use the term theory, but that's kind of, you get the idea, you come up with an explanation for what that data means relative to the, the, the question, the, the topic you're researching. And so I get, I, and so what makes it a hypothesis is it's just a rough explanation. It doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be wrong. You, it's, it's like initial observations. You've, you've collected data, you come up with an explanation, and now you're going to test to see if that hypothesis is valid or invalid. On the same topic, you could run a bunch of tests for years and have, and have thousands of hypotheses. Some of those are proved valid. Some of those are, are, are proved invalid. Once a specific topic has enough validated hypotheses that are kind of all centered around the same topic, then that topic becomes a, can become a theory. And so the, the best example for this is atomic theory. They call it atomic theory now. So the atomic theory meaning that all matter is made up of atoms, these building blocks called atoms. Well, when that first started, I think it was in the 1600s, when it started to, started to really be studied in, in more detail, people decided they wanted to research this topic. I guess the, top, I guess the topic would be, what, is, what exactly is, is matter made of? That's the general topic. People started running tests. They'd run tests. They'd come up with a hypothesis. Some hypothesis were, could be wrong, dead wrong about what matter is made of. 
but there were enough hypotheses centered around the idea of these small building blocks called atoms. There were enough hypotheses like that that were proved correct, that were at least not proved correct, but like that test validated that hypothesis that eventually at some point they said, okay, this is so true here. This is, this is, has so much validation, this central idea, this topic that, or this idea that matter is composed of atoms that we're going to call it a theory. Now, why is it called a theory? Why is it not, why is it not called a fact? Because technically there are no facts, right? Like even today we start, we're starting to see that electrons are, waves and particles like you know we see like e is equal to mc squared matter is like is like a com- combination of energy and, and matter energy is like a combination of mass and waves or whatever so in 300 years 500 years whatever maybe atomic theory won't be valid anymore it'll, it'll be a new theory that replaces atomic theory but it's still valid enough to where we can build things and grow in science and and research with with that theory because it it's it's good enough for where we are we can use that theory to make predictions to make devices get patents make devices based on that theory that that create machines that work that you can get patents on okay now there's also this idea of a law it says a law is a concise verbal or mathematical statement of relationship between phenomena that is always the same under this under the same conditions so like newton's law of motion newton's second law of motion which is f is equal to ma i i I think of this this is like a theory but it's but that you can put numbers to it you can a a a law is like a it's like an equation or or a relation something you can put numbers to and right just like f is equal to ma newton's law it's not a theory it's a law it's a force is equal to mass times acceleration and i I say it's kind of like a theory because i guess you can imagine that newton was trying to understand why things move the way they move just like i guess galileo was before him and so he was running experiments and he came up with hypotheses and there were enough hypotheses that were being validated by the idea that force is proportional to the acceleration of of the of an object and that's proportional to its the proportionality constant is the mass i I guess or you know like it became almost a theory at some point his general idea but once he put numbers to something and actually had like a like a uh, a stamped relation f is equal to ma then that's a law but a law is also kind of like a theory in that i mean you never know maybe in a thousand years there's going to be something even more accurate than f is equal to ma but it's not talking about the mass of the object anymore the accelerator it's something else right so like it's like it's still like a theory though it's a law is still like a theory okay classifications of matter matter is anything that occupies space and has mass so yeah that's what i was talking about matter is just any of the stuff around you no matter no matter what it is solid liquid or gas any stuff around you occupy space and has mass that's matter right and in chemistry we're studying what that matter is like what is it made of what, what is it? And then also, why does it undergo the changes it undergoes, right? If I take some butter and I, and I heat it in a pan, why does it melt like that? Why does it do that? That's chemistry. Okay, now substances and mixtures and, then, and also elements and compounds. I've got a full video that goes into detail on all of this. Um, it's, if you're watching the playlist, it should be right after this in the playlist or, or before this. So I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video, but a substance is a form of matter that has a definite constant composition and distinct properties. So when you say substance, you're talking about that. That's a general term for anything like one chemical compound, one, one chemical thing, right? I don't want to say the word compound because we're about to talk about compound has a specific meaning, but you know, of all the stuff around you, if you have like pure water or pure gold or pure, like, like you know, when I'm saying pure, it's not a mixture, then you have a substance. If you've got two substances that are mixed together, that's called a mixture. So most of the things that you see, that you deal with, most of the stuff around you is some sort of a mixture. And because those, the substances are, are together, but they're not, 
they're still chemically distinct. That's what a mixture is. Two or more substances in which the substances retain their distinct identities. Okay, air, soft drinks, milk, cement. Okay, now a homogeneous mixture is when it's it, it's mixed extremely thoroughly well, like in, in the sense that at every point in the mixture, you have the same like ratio of, of the units, right? Like you could like steel is a solid solution of carbon in iron. So it's like uniformly mixed. I guess coffee if in sugar and coffee, if you mix that really well, it's like, it's, it's the same, you know, concentration of, you know, you don't, you don't have a higher amount of sugar at one spot than another, but you might, you know, like when you get to the end of the coffee, it, you know, it's, it's like a, some of that sugar has settled to the bottom. So that's kind of like a, that would be a heterogeneous mixture, something that it's not, it's, it's not uniform, uniformly mixed. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. There's a, we have, I've, got, I've got a full video that goes into complete detail on this. Okay. So now it says substances can be either elements or compounds. So a substance, it's not a mixture, right? It's not a mixture of chemical components. It's one chemical component. Okay. So like when, when I say that, like water, H2O, that's one chemical component. You can't change water without doing some sort of like a chemical reaction. And then in a similar way that, so it's a substance in a similar way, like gold, pure gold, it's one chemical component. You can't change gold into something else without doing some sort of chemical reaction on it. That's two substances. When you, if you mix two substances, you have a mixture. Mix them, but, they, but, they're, but like if you mix gold and water, I don't know how you would do that, but it, they, don't, they don't change. They don't like, also the gold doesn't react with the water. It's just gold and H2O in the same, you know, mixed together, but they, they, they still retain their chemical identities. That's a mixture. Okay. So, but so, okay. But anyway, so substances can be either elements or compounds An element is like gold, right? It's, it's one atom. A compound is composed of two or more elements in fixed, in fixed proportions, H2O it's fixed proportions. So I said, atom. when I say that, I said that gold is only one atom. So you can see that there's like a distinction between what an atom is and what an element is. An element is like you know, I have a bar of gold. That's the element gold. You're not talking about an atom of gold, one atom of gold. You're talking about just the, you know, that atom as a, as a substance, right? You you see the difference in these names? Okay. Three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. We've got a full video that goes into detail on this. So everyone, you have an idea of what a solid, liquid, and a gas are, but check out that other video. Um, It's either going to be on the video on substances and mixtures, or there's another video on the physical and chemical properties of matter. It's all the chemistry playlist. So check out that, that video, those videos in that, in those videos, we talk about physical and chemical properties. Physical property can be measured and observed without changing the composition or identity of a substance. Yeah. So you can measure it and you don't to, to measure that property you don't have to change the chemical identity of the substance. That's the idea. The smell of something, the, the temperature of something, right? Like the melting point of ice, that's a physical property. That's for ice, that's a fixed amount. The melting point of water or of ice, you can measure that and you don't change the H2O, right? A, a chemical property, if you come here, to observe this property, we must carry out a chemical change, right? If you have to burn something to measure the property, you have to change its chemical. It's a chemical property. That's the, if that's the only way you can measure it, that's the only way is you have to have that substance change its, chemi- its chemical, its chemistry, chemical composition, then it's a chemical property. Again, got a full video that goes in de- into detail on this. Okay, you have extensive properties and intensive properties extensive is so extensive properties don't depend on the or no extensive properties do depend on the quantity of the substance okay so the mass of something that's extensive because it depends on how much of it you have the density of something it, it, it's the same regardless of how much of it the substance you have volume is an extensive property right Density, so the intensity of property doesn't depend on the amount of matter you have. Density is 
an intensive property. So temperature is an intensive property, right? It doesn't depend on how much of something you have. Okay, measurement. All right, so units in measurement is its own beast of a topic. And so I've, I've got a full video that goes into complete detail on that. It's in the physics playlist, but I'm going to include it in, in the chemistry playlist as well. So we're not going to talk, we're not going to get into this. We talk all about SI units, the metric system. We go into all of this, temperature. So here it just tells you what density is, but we'll, we'll, we'll learn about density. Temperature scale, so a conversion between degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's something you can Google, no problem. We talk about in the units and measurement video what these all you know the different units um of temperature and i mean we're going to get into what exactly does kelvin mean we're going to learn that in chemistry but if you just want to learn about in general the different units check out that video and um if you want to convert between kelvin and fahrenheit that's all in that you can google that just make sure it's a reliable reference handling numbers scientific notation significant figures this is this is its own beast of a topic got I've got full length videos on, on both scientific notation and significant figures. I'm going to include it in this playlist, but it's, it's, it's in the physics playlist as well. Okay. Significant figures, significant figures, accuracy and precision. Even these, I'm, I'm going to make a, a separate video on, on, on topics like this. Um, but yeah, accuracy is how close, you all, when you, if you're if you're taking a measurement, okay, let's come here. If you're taking a measurement or whatever, if you're trying to hit the bullseye, accuracy is telling you how close you are to the bullseye. If you keep hitting away from the bullseye, but man, you keep hitting the same spot, very then you're very precise, but you're just not accurate. You see, okay, dimensional analysis and solving problems. We're going to learn how to work with dimensions as we work problems we're going to get good with working with dimensions and, and even this I'm, I'm going to make a whole separate video on okay just real world problem solving i'm not going to go into all this so so yeah that's chapter one